Hey everyone, welcome to Big Flick Energy. I have to apologize as two videos ago, which was actually three weeks ago, I said this. Also, as a little aside here, I fully expect Sony to release the Noah Helm trailer within the next two weeks. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Okay. Although Sony and Disney have been very quiet about Spider-Man, Disney recently released a film in Jungle Cruise. This is a family adventure film which, while hilariously stupid by having a German U-boat in the Amazon River, was a fun experience that I don't think is finished just yet. Jungle Cruise was inspired by the Jungle Cruise ride in Disneyland in a similar way as the Pirates of the Caribbean. Outside of being inspired by Disneyland rides, the Pirates and Jungle Cruise films have a lot more in common than one might think. Both films deal with three main characters who go on a journey on a boat with some sort of magical item which will break a curse and both films end with the curse being broken. This curse is also caused by the antagonist of the film where they become immortal and try to get the magical item for themselves. Outside of this, both films also had some sort of political aspects to it, with the British in Pirates of the Caribbean and the Germans in Jungle Cruise. Now, all of this just sounds like they stole the plot from Pirates, which they low-key did, but I'm here to make the case they take place in the same cinematic universe, along with future Disney park ride movies they decide to make like Haunted Mansion starring Lakeith Stanfield and Tiffany Haddish, and the future Pirates film starring Margot Robbie. Now, I know what some hardcore Pirates fans may be thinking. Oh boy! But in the last Pirates movie, they said the Trident of Poseidon held all curses in it, and it was destroyed, and there was a curse in this movie, so they can't be in the same universe. Blah, 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 blah. Ha ha! Well, Mickey Mouse? You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Break the Trident! Break every curse to sea. Keyword stupid. Keyword sea. Since the Amazon isn't in the sea, there can still be curses outside of it. Considering Poseidon is the god of the seas, it makes sense for that power to only last in the seas and nowhere beyond. Outside of this, there may have been a nod to the pirates in this film. The researcher in the restoration room where Lily enters is scraping barnacles off a ship cannon which could be a nod to pirates considering barnacles can't grow in fresh water, and the main body of water in this film is the Amazon River, meaning this cannon came from the ocean. It's a small detail, but it's also a very random detail to include in this film, considering the only scene at sea in this film is when Francisco and the Conquistadors were on a massive ship and eventually crashed into the Amazon. This cannon could have been from anywhere in the Seven Seas, but it's just fun to imagine it being from a ship we have seen before, like the Black Pearl. It's also not the strangest thing to hear of another cinematic universe coming, considering we have the MCU, DCU, and MonsterVerse, along with many others. This is especially true from Disney, as the MCU is trying to expand on Star Wars, has Pixar, which is one of the most theorized cinematic universes, and can add this one to their plate. Disney doesn't make films without a plan, and I don't think it's a coincidence we just got a Jungle Cruise film, and have both a new Pirates film and a Haunted Mansion film in the works. I also don't think it's a coincidence that all of these stories deal with some sort of curse. I would call this the Cursed Universe or something like that, but it is Disney, so calling it the Disney Park Cinematic Universe seems like a more likely name. So, now I'll discuss the timeline in this world and we'll then discuss the watch order for these films. Also, I chose to not include Tomorrowland in this because Disney did not perform well at all in the box office with that film, and I honestly think that film won't be expanded upon at all. To include it in this video wouldn't ruin my theory, but it also wouldn't add anything to it. So I didn't see the point in including it, and I'll leave it up to you guys on whether Tomorrowland is part of this universe or not. Also, since the Haunted Mansion film hasn't come out yet, I chose to only mention how the mansion came haunted in this video, and no more. I will also be focusing on what happens with all of the curses and the magical aspects of each of the films, instead of directly telling the story of what happens in each of the films, just in case any of you don't want everything to be spoiled. 
So here we go. 1497, nine pieces of eight created in Spain. These were items owned by the pirate lords of the Brethren Court. 1513, Ponce de Leon goes in search of the Fountain of Youth. 1519, Aztecs present Hernán Cortés, a chest with 882 pieces of Aztec gold. 1523, Ponce de Leon finds the Fountain of Youth. This fountain requires a ritual to use. Two silver chalices must be retrieved from Ponce de Leon's flagship, the Santiago. A mermaid's tear must be placed in one chalice, which have to be drunk from simultaneously to activate the fountain's healing properties. The drinker who lacks a tear will die, their life force given to the other. A quick tidbit about mermaids in this universe. Mermaids in this universe become fully human when on land, where their fish tails become human ones. 1556, Aguirre leads Spanish conquistadors to South America to search for the Tears of the Moon, a tree the petals of which can cure illness, heal injuries, and lift curses. The tree will only bloom under blood moon. After many conquistadors die, a local tribe heals the survivors with the tree petals. Aguirre eventually killed the tribal chief for not revealing the secret of the tree, and then cursed the conquistadors to never be able to leave sight of the Amazon River, or the jungle would take them back, making them immortal. After this, Francisco makes a town on the Amazon and continues doing this until 1916, the year Jungle Cruise takes place. 1600s, Davy Jones and Calypso fall in love. Eventually, Davy Jones begins to send souls to the other side, and this is where boats with the dead reside. Later in the 1600s, Calypso is captured, and eventually Davy Jones cuts the heart out of his chest and puts it in the dead man's chest. This makes him into a powerful octopus humanoid who captains the Flying Dutchman and can summon the Kraken along with being immortal. Whoever kills him is cursed with removing their own heart and placing it in the dead man's chest, which will then result in this individual having to captain the Flying Dutchman and only being able to see the one he loves every 10 years. 1660s, Morgan and Bartholomew create the Pirate Code. 1708, Jack traps Captain Salazar in the Devil's Triangle, becomes a captain, gains the nickname Sparrow, and becomes the owner of the compass. The compass points towards what one wants most. In the process, Captain Salazar and his crew become an army of the dead, but are trapped in the triangle forever. Any ship that enters will be destroyed. Animals can also become undead here like sharks. This army of the dead can run on water and is immortal. They are also unable to step on land. 1718, Blackbeard begins to learn dark magic, which he eventually uses to escape his own death. We later see dark magic used in the films by Tia Dalma and in the creation of a voodoo doll of Jack. Later on in 1718, Barbosa steals the 882 pieces of Aztec gold. This curses the crew to be immortal and look like skeletons in the moonlight. The only way to lift the curse is to return all of the gold to the chest along with the blood of those who stole from it. Later in 1718, Elizabeth Swan finds Will Turner at sea and steals his gold pirate medallion around his neck. Governor Swan takes aboard Will Turner. Later on, bootstrap Bill Turner joins the crew of the Flying Dutchman. 1720s, Joshua Me Gibbs becomes a pirate. 1728, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl. Jack is cursed by stealing one of the 882 Aztec coins. By the end of the film, Will Turner returns the last piece of gold, which happens to be the gold pirate medallion Elizabeth stole at the beginning of the film. Will also drops his blood in the chest, which breaks the curse of the Black Pearl. 1729, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Davy Jones shows he can summon the Kraken, a giant octopus creature known across the world through mythology and folklore. We also learn a little bit more about Dead Man's Chest and where to find it. 1729 again, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Will stabs the heart of Davy Jones, leaving him to be the new captain of the Flying Dutchman, where he can only visit the one he loves every 10 years, the same curse Jones was under with Calypso. 1739, Will Turner sees his family after 10 years at sea. 1742, Henry Turner goes in search of his father. 1746, the Black Pearl is attacked by the Queen Anne's Revenge. 1750, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. 
we see Blackbeard wield the Sword of Triton, which allows him to control the ship Queen Anne's Revenge. We know he had it before this year, though, since the Black Pearl was attacked by the ship in 1746. By the end of this film, Angelica is about to die as she was cut by a poisoned sword. Jack tricks Blackbeard into drinking the chalice of the Fountain of Youth that causes him to die but gives Angelica his life force. 1751, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. After Jack trades away the compass for alcohol, Captain Salazar and his crew are allowed to leave the Devil's Triangle. Eventually, Karina leads the charge to find the trident of Poseidon, which leads them to Poseidon's tomb. This trident can break any curse of the sea. It also controls the oceans, like the Kraken, mermaids, etc. Also controls the oceans by giving the user hydrokinesis, which is basically where the user can control water in any way that he or she wants. If destroyed, every curse of the sea will be broken. Eventually, this trident is broken, ending every curse in the sea, permitting the eventual death of Captain Salazar and allowing Will Turner to return back to Elizabeth. Early 1900s, Madame Leota killed Emily, the fiancé of Master Gracie, the owner of the eventual haunted mansion. Later on in the early 1900s, Gracie committed suicide because of what happened to Emily. 1916, Jungle Cruise. Aguirre and his crew are awakened after being fused with the jungle for 300 years, leading to Aguirre being fused with the snakes. Another member being fused with honey and the bees, another being fused with the mud, and the last being fused with the vines and trees. Eventually in the movie, Lily uses a petal to break the curse on Francisco, meaning he can now leave the river. Lastly, this movie ends with Lily keeping another petal which allows her to continue her research. Also, before I finish on Jungle Cruise, I said Francisco. In the movie, they call him Frank. I've never understood why The Rock has no Spanish accent. I get that he left Spain 300 years ago, but he's been living in Brazil. So why does he have an American accent? Good work, Disney. Good work. Mid to late 1900s. Madame Leota dies of old age and is cursed to haunt the mansion forever. All who enter the mansion will die. The order I would watch it in is 1728's Curse of the Black Pearl, 1729's Dead Man's Chest and At World's End, 1750's On Stranger Tides, 1751's Dead Men Tell No Tales, 1916's Jungle Cruise, and then whenever they plan to have Haunted Mansion take place. So. This is a universe of curses and Disney rides that I don't think Disney would be against making into a cinematic universe. My biggest fear is them rebooting the Pirates franchise instead of the Margot Robbie movie just being a spin-off. Not only will it kill this video, but these universe reboots haven't gone well in the past with films like Ghostbusters, while spin-offs like Jurassic World have done well. I'm excited to see if they go through with my plan and look forward to seeing all these films. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and see you next time on Big Flick Energy.